Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair and Honourable Members of uh, Parliament. After five years of intensive negotiations, the chief negotiators have finished their work to deliver a comprehensive economic and trade agreement between the EU and Canada. The INTA Committee immediately received the full text and it will be made public shortly. Canada is the first G8 member with whom we agree on a comprehensive trade deal. The agreement is crucial for the credibility of our trade agenda because it confirms that we can do deals, even very good deals, and in this case with a developed economy with its own established approach and regulatory framework. Hence the challenging times during the negotiation. The agreement is also very valuable in its own right. It creates opportunities for our business. Canada offers a sizable market for European products and services. The operators get the same treatment and even better than that received by US competitors. This is an important achievement sustaining our quest for more jobs and growth in Europe when you consider the uncertain, uncertain economic backdrop on our continent. Politically, Canada is an important ally. It is also an important destination for European investments, but also invests massively in the EU, creating jobs and wealth. Canada is rich in natural resources and raw materials, and it is a significant source of know-how. Now, in, so, in short, through CETA, both sides will eliminate, with very few exceptions, almost all custom tariffs. At the same time, a few very sensitive agricultural products will remain protected. The outcome on services and investment market access puts us on an even better footing than the US under NAFTA. It will also, in, it will also in no way affect the ability of EU governments at all levels to provide and subsidize public services. We have also an unprecedented result on public procurement. Under CETA, we receive significant access to public procurement markets in Canada at all levels of government. On investment, the agreement establishes a system that sets a new standards for investor-to-state dispute settlement procedures. We are well aware of the concerns that exist this agreement directly addresses all the concerns that have emerged so far. I also want to highlight the result on uh, geographical indications. We have achieved a very extensive protection in uh, Canada of the designations of Europe's high-quality agricultural products, be it Parmigiano Reggiano, Schwarzwalder Schinken, Bleu d'Auvergne or 142 others, which are fully protected. This is one of the parts which most visibly shows how CETA can also benefit small and medium-sized operators across Europe. The EU-Canada trade and investment relationship will not come at the expense of environmental or social and labour standards. We are both aware that we have a responsibility here. It is the highest standard we have in trade agreements and it is more than what Canada has done before. In terms of uh, next steps, uh, President Barroso and the Canadian Prime Minister Mr. Harper intend to publicly announce the conclusion of the negotiations at the EU-Canada Summit in Ottawa on the 26th of September. And further to this, both sides will submit this text to their respective legislators for verification and ratification. In the case of the EU, this means to Council and to Parliament. Because legal verification and official translations take so long, it, I would expect signature and formal transmission of the text to Parliament to take, place, to take place well into 2015. Coming this far at the pace that has uh, been punishing for those involved is an important achievement the Commission is proud of. And I am looking forward to this legislature's support for CETA contribution to the creation of more jobs and growth in Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Now, the first speaker I had on the list, Madame Christo Dorovold, hasn't arrived, but EPP has asked me to take Mr. Salvatore Chico as the first speaker. I will give him the floor for three minutes. Das Catch the Eye Verfahren ist abgeschlossen. Zum Abschluss der Aussprache erhält Herr Kommissar de Küch das Wort. Thank you. Uh Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, before turning to ISDS, 
because that's obviously uh, the one issue that uh, will make that most of uh, members present in this uh, parliament tonight are not going to sleep well. I will try to uh, uh, give a reply to a number of questions uh, that have been put. Although, Mr. Lightfoot, I think you will sleep well. I mean. And I hope it for you, by the way. Um, first question by Mr. Martin. Uh, why uh, does the Council not initial this agreement and it would have done it for all others? You know, the Council never initials an agreement. Never. Never done so before. Uh, the procedure is that uh, it is the European Commission at initials after the legal scrubbing and the legal scrubbing isn't done yet. So what uh, uh, President Barroso and uh, Prime Minister Harper will announce at the summit, uh, the EU-Canada summit, is the end, the conclusion of the negotiations. So that, that's, a, that's a simple answer to your question. Um, on genetic medicines, yes, I can uh, give you assurances that we are not going to change that. By the way, not only not with Canada, but also, for example, with, uh, with other countries. Uh, um, take the negotiations with India that are not, not yet concluded. Uh, uh, we have had also there the approach that uh, it, this uh, should not hamper the uh, uh, trade in genetic medicines. The non-trade issues like uh, the SEALS ban and the uh, tear sands, uh, we have decided that this is up to the WTO to decide. I think that was uh, uh, a sign of uh, probably although limited uh, wisdom. Um, on, the, uh, on the mandate uh, and the public consultation, I will come back on the public consultation, but in the mandate I, I would like to make it very clear, you know, that in the mandate we were asked to uh, discuss uh, and uh, come to an agreement on ISDS. But I come back to that later on. Um, Mr. Mineur and some others have also made mention, made mentioning to, uh, that this would only be an agreement for the big companies, you know, and not for the SMEs. Now, big companies don't need free trade agreements, you know. The ones that need free trade agreements are the SMEs. Because what you're really doing with this kind of agreement with uh, a DCFTA is give them, giving them a new home market. That's what you're effectively doing. So this is uh, certainly uh, uh, not true. Then a number of questions have been put with respect to uh, the, uh, the access to the uh, agreement uh, by Mr. Jadot, uh, Chairman Lange. Uh, Now, it's, it's in fact very simple. As soon as the con uh, negotiations were concluded, we have sent it to the Parliament, amongst you to you, uh, Mr. Lange, and to the Member States. And yes, uh, the text uh, of CETA will be published. Um, and at uh, this moment, both sides are coordinating the preparations. And this includes prepari uh, prepar uh, pre excuse me, preparing a version for the visually impaired and uh, minor editing uh, that has to be done. And the publication should not be far off from next week's summit. It's very simple. We are, we are not hiding anything, you know. Although I'm not sure that so, that many citizens are really waiting uh, to read this agreement during autumn nights. You know, I, I, I have my doubts about that. I even have my doubts that you would do it. And if I can give you uh, an advice, I wouldn't do it. Um, it, it, it's, uh, even with some editing, it's, it's uh, very dry stuff to read, huh? very dry stuff. Um, also, uh, Mrs. Begin was uh, um, fearing that citizens were not aware of the text. Um, Madame Le Pen, but she has disappeared. I mean, she was here with a lot of supporters, you know, but she... But she disappeared immediately, probably, uh, uh, I don't know what she is doing, but uh, uh, she has asked you that for once you would vote in the right direction. Now, she, she is asking that all the time, you know, 
and uh, I have, can only come to the conclusion that you are not following her. So maybe sooner or later you should explain, you should explain why. Uh, Mr. Kelly on the quota system, but Mr. Kelly has also disappeared. Everybody is getting out here. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm speaking too long. Um, the quota system and the, highly, the high quality cuts, you know. Uh, there is a differentiation between high quality cuts and other cuts. Very clear differentiation. And we know the difference between those, you know. That these are uh, separate markets and that you have to take that... Uh, uh, that you have to take that into account. And then there was still a question by uh, Madame Arena whether we are going to change the, uh, uh, the norms and standards for um, uh, social norms and standards, environmental and others. Of course we are not, and it's not because you discuss them that you're going to change them. The only ones that can change those uh, standards, uh, uh, Madame Arena, that's yourself as mean the European Parliament. Then uh, on the citizens, uh, initiative, Citizens uh, uh, for Initiative, ECI. Now, a citizen's initiative allows EU citizens to ask the Commission to use its powers to propose the adoption of legislation. It could, for instance, call on the Commission to propose concluding an agreement with a third country. But it does not cover requests to EU institutions not to do something, for example, to stop negotiating a trade agreement such as TTIP, or not to sign or conclude an agreement such as CETA once negotiations have ended. Then it's in the hands of the Parliament and the Council. And for this reason, the request not to conclude the CETA agreement and to stop the ongoing TTIP negotiations has been considered inadmissible. And the criteria on which the Commission's decision is based are purely legal criteria. I understand that you are going to oppose this, and of course, that's your damn right to do so. Now, on ISDS, let me start, uh, if, if I have some more minutes, uh, President, but uh, I got uh, hundreds of questions of this, and I understand that, I mean, this is really keeping uh, awake everybody, so I, I will try to, to, to give an answer. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, in the April 2011 European Resolution on Future Investment Policy, the uh, ARIF report, which was adopted with a very large majority, including SND, in response to the Commission's communication on investments, the Parliament did call for having ISDS procedures in EU investment agreements. Why calling to ensure that there will be no abuses of the system? That's the starting point of my reasoning. The same goes for the mandate that we got from the Council of Ministers. It is explicitly in that mandate that has been adopted unanimously that we should go for an ISDS agreement. Now, I don't know exactly why, but uh, all of a sudden this has become the issue, the overriding issue uh, when, it comes, uh, when it comes to trade. Uh, and a lot of uh, members have mentioned the uh, public uh, consultation that uh, should uh, show overridingly that, in fact, the whole of the European population is thinking that line. We will come next week or in a couple of weeks with the first uh, analysis of the uh, public consultation results. What that shows is that there are more than 50,000 out of 150,000 answers that are identical, you know. So uh, normally you have to get into the system, you have to answer the 12 questions, and then you send your answer. Now, they, the ones that have responded, have tried a way, I don't know, understand, I don't know, understand anything about all these technicalities, but they have found a way to circumvent this and uh, give an answer without getting into the system. And that, of course, makes it very easy to give 50,000 uh, uh, identical answers. You could have 500,000. Why not? And then there are another 50,000 that uh, are simply saying we are against. Uh, but we will look into all the answers, and uh, if there are interesting elements in it, we will certainly take them into account. Now, is CETA a blueprint for TTIP or any other EU agreements? I would rather think that uh, uh, much more than a blueprint, CETA, as well as the agreement with Singapore, by the way, is a turning point in the European approach on investment protection. 
it evidences beyond any doubt that the commission is generally committed to reforming the system and let me just name a few of the novelties and unique improvements achieved in ceta first explicit reference to the capacity of states to regulate in the public interest second precise definition of investment protection standards to prevent abusive interpretations third full transparency in isds all hearings are open all documents are public interested third parties can make submissions by the way this goes much further than whatever proceeding in a commercial court in a commercial court the only thing that is open is a judgment you cannot get into the files of the parties there are a lot of lawyers not many tonight of course uh, but lawyers know that you know you, you cannot dig, dig into the file of, of, the, of the other party. You simply cannot do that. What you have is the judgment. It will be much more transparent here. It's the first ever agreement incorporating binding rules on ethics and conduct arbitrators. There are strict controls on cost and introduction of the loser pays principle, making sure that investors bringing spurious claims pay the cost. We have uh, decided, we have agreed that... Uh, uh, an appellate body uh, will be established based largely on the WTO appellate body practice and this is the most effective way to create consistency in arbitration decisions, make arbitrators accountable and ensure predictability. Now there are many other improvements in CETA and it is not excluded that further improvements of the EU's approach in other negotiations are possible. But one has to be clear. And that's that CETA and TTIP are two different negotiations. CETA text is already agreed with Canada. In contrast, the Commission has launched a public consultation to receive the views of stakeholders and citizens, especially on TTIP. The analysis of this replies, the replies received during the consultation will inform decisively the EU position on TTIP. And I can hence confirm that CETA is not the blueprint for TTIP, as I can confirm that the reform process of the system to which you has been committed is a one-way street and it cannot go back. What we try to improve by CETA will only be further improved in future negotiations. Now, several members have put the question, why do we need ISDs in CETA between countries with solid, mature judicial systems? The issue is more one of enforcement than of the standard of the maturity of the legal system per se. We need to make sure that EU investors can enforce their rights. And this is because the CETA agreement would not be enforceable in Canadian domestic courts. It would not because Mr. Leifried, and you probably know that, they have a dualist approach. We have a monist approach. Any trade agreements, including any guarantees on investment protection, signed by the EU with a third country, whether it is Canada, yes, or Singapore, would not be automatically enforceable by domestic courts of either party. And if not enforceable, in line with Canada's consistent practice, domestic courts cannot give effect to international treaties. Second, the fact that there is no solid legal system does not mean the absence of problems for investors. The Energy Charter Treaty already applies between many countries with developed legal system. Also, the EU member states themselves have numerous bilateral investment treaties amongst each other. According to recent UNCTAD figures, of the 271 cases registered between 2008 and 2013, 15% of these cases, and that's 40 cases, are intra-EU cases. ISDS cases initiated by investors from an EU member state against another EU member state. And we have proposed, by the way, that we would uh, have uh, another rule within the European Union and many member states, you know. Also, your member state, Mr. Lange, have refused to do so when it was with respect to other member states of the European Union. Third, there are several imbalances on the policy side that we need to address. Currently, eight member states have bilateral investment treaties with Canada, and this means that only the investors coming from those member states are protected in Canada. The others are not. And finally, CETA is an opportunity for us to introduce reforms to the ISDS system. It could pave the way for a new era of investment agreements and serve as a model for the rest of the world. And that is a very important argument. 
I remember very well that we had a public uh, meeting in Berlin with the participation of uh, uh, Mike Froman and myself and also uh, the Vice Chancellor, Mr. Sigmar Gabriel. And it was a very lively discussion, uh, the kind of discussions I like, and that's why I have been doing politics for 35 years, by the way. And at the end, Mr. Gabriel said, well, maybe, maybe the, it, it, there are some positive elements in it as well. For example, the fact that uh, it's very difficult uh, uh, to uh, uh, refuse uh, ISDS with the uh, United States or, or with Canada and ask it uh, with China. Well, we have to set a template for the rest of the world. And I hope that uh, Parliament will, in the course of these discussions on this uh, uh, agreement, also understand this. Thank you very much. Vielen Dank, Herr Kommissar. Herr Kommissar de Gücht, Sie haben jetzt länger gesprochen, als wir eigentlich mit Ihnen damit gerechnet haben. Aber ich will mal ausdrücklich sagen, gestern Abend haben Sie sehr viel kürzer gesprochen als die Redezeit, die wir vorgesehen hatten. Und ich will jedenfalls von meiner Seite aus sagen, dass ich es außerordentlich schätze, dass Sie in weitgehend freier Rede auch auf